So hi, I am Jonathan Catoni on Recruits. We have uh, founder and scout uh, and scout of Recruits, Grant McCag. How are you doing? That's uh, Chief Scout to you. Chief Scout. <laughs> Well, it's good to meet you finally, and you know, face to face at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll just get into it, talk about the draft, the Habs, and uh, go from there. So, first off, Daniel Boo, you've had a lot of criticism on Twitter, especially um, ranking him in your top five. Tell us about him. Tell us why you like him. And yeah. Oh, there's criticism. <laughs> I don't read the replies. I I've learned. I've learned <laughs> not to uh, not to bother because. Everybody's got a way in, eh? Everybody's mm -hmm. a. That's the beautiful thing about uh, the NHL draft. There, everybody's a, a draft expert these days because they they can actually see video of guys. You know, mm -hmm. not like when I was a kid. You, uh, you know, you might have seen a couple of Memorial Cup games, and if the and if the uh, player wasn't in in the Memorial Cup, you really didn't see him at all. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, but even then, we thought we, you know. Well, look at his stats. He should be top 10, right? Mm -hmm. Times have changed a little bit and everybody, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot more, uh, uh, what would you call, wannabe scouts, back, back yeah. scouts than there used to be. And that's yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> and it's funny, I, you know, is it, I, I'm not even sure how you pronounce the kid's name yet. You know? <laughs> but, but's the easiest way to say it, but that yeah. be, be uh, we'll call him Butte because he's a Butte. Because he's a Butte. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Uh, so, you, what was your question? Yeah. So, just what were your thoughts on him? Like, yeah, what do you, what do you, about him? His strength, his strength, his weaknesses. Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, one of his strengths is that I don't see any weaknesses. <laughs> pretty good, eh? That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's no if ands or buts uh, with this guy. It's. Uh, yeah, he's <laughs> another pun. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's got uh, he's got size. He's competitive. Uh, earlier in the year, I had heard you know concerns uh, about his defensive game from oh Russian kids on Twitter that criticized my. I actually I see the odd comment and somebody said, "Oh, how can you have him top twenty? He doesn't check." And, Mm -hmm. I mean, to a certain extent, that was true early on, but uh, as the season's gone along, he has really developed his all-around game. He uh, he back checks uh, ferociously. He, he's got very good speed for a 6'5 kid. Uh, excellent hands, very physical. Um, he's, he's taken over games in, in the MHL playoffs with his physical presence, nailing guys that uh, I, I put up a clip today, you know, it showed a kid, and he's probably 20, 21 years old. And, you know, this just turned 18 year old just smacks him into the, into the glass. And then, you know, the, the clip ends with him with an ice bag on it, on his neck, you know, like uh, he, uh, w which was kind of nice, you know, I, sometimes I get the clips just right there, you know, but uh, yeah, he's uh, the, the six, five with, with the skill that he has, like he's got great hands, great shot um really high offensive potential but also the potential to be an all-around uh um solid player he he plays on the power on the power play he plays on the penalty kill uh he plays when the team's up by a goal you know he plays when the team needs a goal he um he's developed into just an all-around uh excellent prospect that i think you know if he wasn't rushing would go top five you have two Russian guys in him and Mitchkov. Obviously, Mitchkov has been the higher ranked player for, you know, two, three years nowadays. Um, you, you've heard of him, have you? Yeah, I've heard about him just a bit. <laughs> um, so, like, tell us why you think, it, like, is there a big difference in between those two guys? Or do you think there's going to be, you know, who, who's better, essentially? Who's better? Yeah, well, uh I mean, different players, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, Michkov obviously has the pedigree and the, uh, you know, the back, uh, the uh, background. Um, mm -hmm. He's been, he and Berdard have been the two, uh, you know, touted guys for forever. And uh, with good reason. I mean, he's an extremely talented kid, but um, 
will he be as good defensively as, as Butte or, or anywhere close to him physically or all around? That's where Butte has the edge, obviously. Um, Butte might have as good a shot. It, it's, you know, it, it, it's close in that regard too. Obviously, Michkov uh, is probably a little more dynamic, a little more skill, but he's 5'10 as well. Mm -hmm. boy, you know, when you're 6'5, you, 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 you can only be so shifty. But, uh, um, you know, Butte, Butte's game might translate better to the NHL as far as, um, you know, high offensive upside going forward. But I think both of them can be point-per-game guys. And ultimately, I guess Michkov is, uh, is a guy that could be a 100-point scorer. Yeah. So there might be a little more, you, you know, you might see some higher point totals in the regular seasons from, from Michkov. Um, but at the end of the day, you pick guys top 10 ultimately to help you win playoff games. And, uh, based on what I've seen, uh, this Butte kid could be, uh, could be a real home run, you know, that it helps you, uh, in all uh, us, all facets of the game to help you win playoff games. So I don't think he's that far from Michkov. And, uh, the fact that he will be, uh, he, he isn't under an FKHL contract for three mm -hmm. years. Also, you know, gives him a bit of an edge in that regard. So at this point, it, it'd be interesting to see. It wouldn't completely shock me if a uh, team ended up drafting him ahead of Michkov because of that reason. If you're the Canadians with what all the prospects, they have a lot of small guys, as you mentioned in your articles. Do you take Boo or do you take Michkov? Yeah, for the Canadians, I'd take Butte. Um, it, you know, presumably he'll be he'll be over sooner. I mean, that's all up in the air as well. Like maybe he doesn't come for three years either. And if that's the case, then you know, maybe you lean towards Michkov. But all things being equal, you know, he'll likely be over within a year. And um, getting adapted to the North American game well before Michkov. And I mean, with uh, you look at Montreal's winger prospects and who's on the team, like Caulfield, uh, Harvey Pinard, Gallagher, um, Farrell, Meshuggah, lots of big guys, and Roy. All of them are undersized, right? Um, do you need another winger, even if he might be better than all of them, with perhaps the exception of Caulfield? Mm hmm. A uh, you need a mix to win in the NHL playoffs. There's no team that has five, uh, you know, four or five forwards under under six feet in their top mm -hmm. nine. There's none. So, yeah. uh, it just from the standpoint of Canadians' needs, I think uh, Butte is the better is the better choice, and also because I think he'll be over sooner, and Montreal doesn't plan on waiting four or five years mm -hmm. to compete i think i think they feel they can compete within a couple of years okay um dvorsky dalibor dvorsky the center you have him still fifth in your rankings while others have had or well, have him dropped in their rankings tell us a bit about that and why you like him as a player yeah well like others being like uh independent lists mm -hmm. yes certainly nhl teams don't have them where independent scouts do. Like mm -hmm. I, speak, I, you know, I'm connected to the NHL, as you know, and, uh, you know, I don't know any, I don't know any NHL scouts that don't have them in their top seven. So, you know, you can look at a, it. It's, it was the same with McTavish a couple of years ago. You know, everyone would ask me, well, how come you've got him top three and, you know, Craig Button or whatever has him 10th? Well, because, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm wrong, right? I mean, that yeah. doesn't mean I'm right, but <laughs> you know, I have him there because I think that's where he should go, and uh, and also I have backing from NHL scouts. I I don't make my lists uh, without you know without consulting mm -hmm. them and getting some backing as a rule. I mean, I go rogue every now and then. Goliev, I have in my top ten, and I don't think any of my scouting friends do, but. I mean, there's reasons for that too, because he's mm -hmm. rough. I mean, he's five ten defenseman. You know, NHL scouts are old school, and they don't. Uh, I mean, I, I know a lot of them that didn't have Quinn Hughes 
in their top 10. After a while, you have to start to, you know, if you keep seeing examples like that, where the same with Lane Hudson, you know, nobody took him till 60th overall. Well, I think, I think, uh, you know, history's showing that he should have got a lot higher than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So at some point, you have to stop being so stubborn about it and just look at the player and, and see how talented he is and not look at the height so much, you know. So, um, Dvorsky is just a, a fantastic all around centerman. He uh, he was tasked at 17 and a half years of age at the World Juniors with shutting down Bedard, Cooley, um, you know, top notch uh, juniors, and he did a great job. Now, uh, in the past, whenever he plays against his peers, he puts up great numbers. People are, are looking at his stats playing against men at 17. Mm -hmm. where then saying oh well it's you know they aren't dynamite stats so he can't have very good offensive upside but you know they said the same thing with Slavkovsky last year and he ended up going first overall mm -hmm. uh you you don't just take in the kid's stats in mm -hmm. playing against men at that age because obviously it's 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 hard it's a hard adjustment these you know he's you look more at the fact that he played all season against men than you do at his raw stats. And uh, he went back to junior, you know, at the end of the year, which often happens. They don't coaches. Uh, well, you, uh, you look at Dom Ducharme a couple of years ago in the playoffs, you know, who did he start the playoffs with? He didn't have Caulfield and Cotton Yammy. No. Right. It's the same with European coaches. They're conservative too. You know, they go with the vets to start. So I, I don't, you know, some people say, well, he's not in the lineup in the playoffs. And well, that's not his fault. That's a, that's the coaches being conservative, just as they always are, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, gone back to junior. He had 10 goals in five games in junior when he got, when he got sent back down. So, well, everything will come out in the uh, U18s. That's when we'll see he has not played at his age level two or three years last time he did he was 16 at the u18s and he finished second to meach cobb and scoring ahead of slavkoski ahead of all sorts of guys that are you know that have been drafted top five since uh he was a year younger and he outscored all of them so i have a feeling that he'll he'll light it up at the u18s or if not light it up at least be one of the better players and I think a lot of these uh, independent lists are going to start inching him up, just like they did with McTavish, you know. This time of year in McTavish's draft year, I moved him up to top five, top three. I ended up putting him second. And a lot of lists still had him outside the top ten till, you know, till the U18s where he was uh, fantastic. And uh, people started to move him up. And sure enough, he went top three in the draft. So, wow, yeah. Um, so staying on the topic with the draft, who's your biggest risers and fallers aside from the Russian boo guy? Yeah. Uh. Well, Reinbacher has been the biggest. Uh. You know, him and Butte have been the uh, the two risers for me in uh, in the past month or so. Um, I think a lot of scouts that had already considered Reinbacher to be the best defenseman in the draft class, but uh, the world juniors, he was on a really poor Austrian team and uh, mm -hmm. they got blown out. And it's really tough to gauge a, a kid playing when you're losing games, 10, nothing and, you know, 11, one and stuff. And he was deathly sick. Like uh, Blaine Potvin, who does a bit of writing for recruits there, he he lives in Halifax and he interviewed the kid and was at all the games and he was saying that the kid he missed one game and he was you know taking taking a lot of medication I think IVs even and stuff like he shouldn't have even played yet he still looked good you know like pretty solid at, at that event but because he didn't dominate uh, people kind of uh, you know he kind of fell uh, off the radar you know when you're not seeing these guys it's easy to kind of forget them right out of yeah. mind, out of sight like you see all the canadian kids uh, like crystal and and uh 
you know, Benson and all these guys ranked ahead of them. Well, we see them all the time, right? They're mm -hmm. scoring hat tricks in the WHL. You see the highlights up on up on Twitter and you, you can watch the games and stuff. And so we think, well, okay, you know, they must be the best. But, you know, there's these kids that, that only the scouts are really keeping a close eye on that, uh, that keep impressing. And he did so uh, against men in the Swiss League all year. At the end of the year in the playoffs, he was playing um, 20, you know, more than 20 minutes a game on a top pairing, uh, penalty killing role, shutdown role, uh, power play. I mean, for an 18 year old kid to be doing that in the Swiss League's a really good league. It's really fast, a lot of X yeah. and sellers in it, uh, a lot of really good Europeans. And uh, for him to be doing that, it really impressed everybody. And I think, uh, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think he'll be the first defenseman to go off the board, and it it could be top five. I talked to a scout at the game last night. I went to see Richie, Kill and Richie play uh, in Gatineau against uh, 67s, and he said, yeah, I could see Ryan Bacher going top five. Um, it's been 25, 30 years since a defenseman didn't go top five. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it, it, there's just so much value, you know, we, I think, uh, NHL guys think that he'll be a 20 minute a night defenseman. And, uh, that's such a valuable piece, you know, mm -hmm. like as, as good as Carlson is and, uh, Dvorsky and all these guys, they aren't going to play 20 plus minutes a night. So, uh, teams really value that. And also the fact that he's a right defenseman, he's got prototypical size at six, two, very good skater. Uh, a lot of upside still, a lot of potential growth as well. And uh, I really think that uh, he won't last past the top eight for sure, I don't think. Wow. Um, who would you say is the biggest red flag come this draft? Mm, red flag. Okay. Uh, I think uh, you have to look at... Um, what I've noticed is there's a lot of lists that have uh, five, nine, five, ten uh, forwards, very high. And the one guy that I'm a little concerned about is, is Crystal. Uh, I don't see him going top 10, um, but he could go in the top 20. And I still think that there's a bit of a risk involved there because his skating is not uh, is not dynamic, certainly for his size. His defensive game is not very good, and there's a lot of work that's going to have to come in that regard. As skilled and as smart as he is and you know, as productive as he is as a junior, you sometimes have to be careful with uh, – you're not picking an, an all-star uh, junior team. You know, you're not picking a team that uh, – you're not picking a player to go on a team that's going to try to win the Memorial Cup the next year. Mm -hmm. You're picking a kid that you want to – play at the NHL level and play in the top six role, especially if you're drafting top 10 or top 15. Um, he may be a kid that uh, has to either be in your top six or he isn't playing. And it may require two or three years at, it, you know, at the uh, AHL level before, before he's ready. And, uh, you know, so you get two or three years out of him and then he becomes a restricted free agent and, you know, you may not have got your money's worth with him if you pick him in the top 15 or top 20. So I know a lot of NHL scouts don't have him nearly as high as uh, you see on these on these lists. Certainly not top 10. I don't know any of them that, that think of him as a top 10 prospect. So um, as far as red flag, you know, when it comes to public lists, I think uh, Crystal's a guy that you may see drop uh, on draft day. Last one on the draft here before we move over to the Habs. Uh, who's one player in the late teens and the twenties uh, that you think is a sure bet to become a you know a very solid NHL player? Top fifteen, twenty. Um, a sure bet. Now, when you say the top fifteen, twenty, you mean in my list? Yeah, in your opinion. List? Yeah, it, who you think is like a gem, like a hidden gem, essentially. Yeah. Uh, 
like I, I mean, every guy that I have in my top 20, I think he's going to be really good at <laughs> teller, you know, um, I don't really have any hidden gems in the top. 20, okay. You know, with you, that, I, I can't really answer you that question. Okay. No problem. Um, talk about the Habs a bit. Now they're prospects. Uh, let's start with Philip Machar in the OHL with the Rangers. Not having the season he was hoping for coming over from overseas. What do you say about his game? Is it more so of him not playing well? Is it a team effort? What is it? Uh, well, like when you look at his points. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it goes beyond points. Obviously. Yeah, for sure. You know? And he's a point per game guy. Uh, the first year, in, uh, you know, an OHL rookie point per game adapting to the North American game. That, that's not horrible. Uh, Kitchener had a lot of issues this year. You, you look at his at their uh, uh, team scoring. He's I think he's third on the team. Uh, you know they had one guy Pinelli score ninety points and then nobody else had sixty. So um, you know they they had a lot of struggles and I don't know that the coaching w was great because they ended up you know getting rid of the coach. So. Um, since Mike McKenzie, Bob's son, came in, you know, took over, I think he's been playing better. Uh, the whole team's played better. And um, so I'm not too worried about him, but I did, uh, you know, I think his first game or first couple of games, he had quite a few points. And you're thinking, oh, this kid's going to win the OHL scoring race. You know, him and Beck are going to battle all year for yeah. the scoring title. And they both, you know, both of them maybe didn't uh didn't didn't meet expectations when it comes to production it's fair to say but uh he um he he's a smart solid player that uh plays a pretty good all-around game he drives the play in a lot of instances which is uh uncommon for it for a winger but of course he's played a lot of center um that's another thing too he kind of had to adjust to playing you know on the wing and he was maybe more used to playing at center in yeah. his minor league days. So that's an adjustment as well. But I'll be a little more, you know, I think he needs another year junior. And um, we'll see, you know, if he makes that jump that you hope that he can make next year. If not, if he's like close to a point a game next season, then I'll start to worry, you know. But uh seen a lot of good things from him this year. And I think... uh you know, you're drafting outside the top 25, you, you know, um, it, it's hit or miss to a certain degree. Like, yeah. you know, not all these guys hit, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to, you can't always expect them to uh, to prosper, you know, and um, we'll see. But I, uh, you know, with, with the amount of uh, smaller guys that there are in in, in the system, and the, the development of, of Farrell and Roy, um, R H R H P, mm -hmm. like he has, he, you do wonder if maybe you know Meshar could be a guy that uh, gets dangled uh, as far as a trade goes down the road, maybe to uh, to fill another position. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. I think he, they like the fact that you know he's buddies with Slav too, right? So. Um, um there there's been chemistry with them in the past it's funny i was looking back at some video and um uh Meshar played with slavkowski and uh and uh Dvorsky a lot at the u18 events before yeah. they, you know if they did end up drafting uh Dvorsky, you'd wonder if if the three of them might end up being online together at some point <laughs> down the road which is kind of cool that would be pretty cool. Um, talk about a bit more about uh, Harvey Pinard. He's on a 36 goal pace. Obviously, it's going to be hard to maintain that for years to come. But what's his ceiling? Do you think? Uh, yeah. Uh, not, I guess he can be a top six, uh, winger. You know, um, I mean, he keeps fooling me. I don't. I didn't expect this. You know, I thought he might come up and be a, like an energy line guy, you know, mm -hmm. play on the fourth line, chip in the odd goal, but just with his hard work and, you know, two-way play, be a play with Pizzetta and, 
you know, bring energy to the, to the bottom line. Uh, so, uh, I guess, I guess he could be a, a second line set, uh, second line winger it, uh, would be his upside, but I think middle line, you know, middle line guy that can uh, chip in some goals and just bring that heart and soul every game. There's a prospect in Sweden. Oh yeah. There's a prospect in Sweden, a defenseman that you are very passionate about Angstrom. Tell us about his game, how he's just playing fantastic this year in Sweden. And yeah. Yeah. Well, we're running out of time here according to uh, what's left. Nine minutes. Yeah. Nine minutes. Oh, okay. Don't know why that thing came up saying uh, <laughs> when we still got nine minutes here. Yeah. Didn't bother telling me that. Now we see it on the screen. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I like Engstrom a lot. I think he's a uh, he's um, going to be a uh, going to be an NHL defenseman now. Whether it's in Montreal or not, it's another story because they're appear to be loaded. Uh, mm -hmm, yeah, especially on the left side, you know. Uh, at the very least, he's a he's a good trade chip down the road if uh, he doesn't crack the Canadians lineup. Certainly, he's got NHL potential. He might even have top four potential. Whether that's in Montreal or not, that remains to be seen. But because I like a lot of their left defensemen, you know, I mean, you think of Gooley and Hudson as probably the the guys that you hope will be, uh, you know, in the top two pairings down the road. But perhaps Hudson is a third pairing guy that's a power play specialist too, which would be fun. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, his skating's, I talked to Rob Ramage about him and he was saying that his skating has improved quite a bit and that he's, uh, you know, he's got really solid potential. Um, uh, just getting back to that question you asked me about, you know, uh, who's a can't miss like mm -hmm. 15 to 20 range. Yeah. My, uh, my rankings are kind of fluid right now. You know, they're moving around a lot. I mean, I love a kid. I think maybe a better way of putting it is who is a sleeper, you know, like I don't, none of, I don't like to say a guy is can't miss at 15, 20, because uh, sure, sure as heck he ends up missing, right? Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you, you're, uh, you, you're trying to project kids that are 17 years of age and, and there's always going to be, you're always going to be wrong on some, but uh, I have had a had a kid from Sweden, Edstrom, in my top twenty. That uh, you don't see. Uh, I don't think Mackenzie has him in his top one hundred. I don't know that Button has him. Uh, CS had him like thirty seventh ranked in Europe. Um, his play in the last few weeks hasn't been as good as it was, but for a while there, I thought he was a top fifteen guy. Just. Uh, Six two center that that really uh, plays the game right. He's very smart, very uh, uh, anticipates anticipates the play really well. He um, he he was scoring a goal a game there for about fifteen games at the uh, junior level, and then got called up to the big team and scored three goals in five games or something like that. He uh, he. He really impresses me as a as a sleeper, as a dark horse that I have in my top 20. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him uh at the under 18s because scouts, uh, my scouting friends that have for one reason or another not seen him much this year. And uh they haven't been able to back me up on that like I'd like. So I, I'm kind of going a bit rogue on that one. But uh, I have heard that some teams do have him in their top 20. And um, he, he's a guy that's up under the radar. And I hope he, he, the last U18, he got injured in the first game or the second last. So uh, scouts didn't really get to see him. And then when they were going over to Europe, they didn't see him. So uh, the U18 is going to be big for him. And I hope he, uh, he shows what I think he can and that he, uh, he goes up a lot of draft lists and uh, as a, as a real dark horse sleeper for the top 20. We'll finish off back going to the draft. Um, who do you think the Canadians should target at the draft? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's easy for me to say 
uh, that they should take Butte because I'm not making the pick and I'm not, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's so much risk involved, right? Uh, you know, like, like I always see, you know, oh, take Meechkov, like everybody, you know, everybody on Twitter. Well, that's easy to say that when you're not making the pick, right? Yeah. If he ends up being a superstar, well, see, you know, what did I say? That's fine, but there's so much risk involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to weigh the risk uh, uh, along with the reward, you know, to a certain extent. Like, it's not like Michkov is the only good player that's going to be available after Antilli and, and Bedard. So, uh, I mean, if he's there when Montreal picks, you know, I wouldn't be upset if they took him. Mm -hmm. uh, but I certainly would understand if, if they didn't. Um, same with Butte, you know, I, I think that he's, he's a, a really good fit. Um, he would complement all the smaller wingers that they have and like him and Slavkovsky, you know, on the one side, on the top two lines, along with Caulfield and whoever else out of the small guys ends up winning that second, yeah, that second spot, that perfect. You know, I, I, I love to see, uh, lines with that mix, you know, you got the you got the sniper, the little guy, you've got the the boards guy, you got the, you know, the the smart centerman. Um, ideally, that's a great line. So uh mute, I mean uh Dvorsky, yeah, I don't think you can go wrong with Dvorsky, because I think he's gonna help you win playoff games. And ultimately that's what the Canadians are building towards. He he'll be able to play any position, it won't just be center necessarily, but he's good on draws. Uh I like the I like a team having multiple centers playing on a line because you can mix and match. You can, you know, their strong side, they can take center, uh, face offs. Doc's not great on face offs. So ideally, you have a, another centerman playing with them mm -hmm. to protect them in that regard. Uh, I think Reinbacher is, is a really good fit. They need another right defenseman. Uh, you can't have too many of them. Um, you know they've got Baron and and Mayu in the in the pipeline. They need one more. Yeah, and, uh, he could well be. Um, you know, certainly top four, um, all day, and maybe top pairing like him and Gooley, you know, or uh, him and Hudson. Um, in fact, that is probably the the pairing that I had envisioned being, because I think Hudson's going to need a you know, a really good defensive defenseman to play along with him with some size and some physical presence. And uh, ideally, uh, Reinbacher is a perfect fit in that regard. And I also think that he's going to be a heck of a defenseman. So uh, Dvorsky, Butte, and Reinbacher would be my, uh, you know, would be the guys that I would lean towards. I know that's not what most have fans, <laughs> you know, they they seem to uh, think other guys are, would be better suited, but uh, I think they they feel they fill a need, and they're also you know, top ten guys all day. So um, those are the three that I would like them to to consider the most. Well, we're running out of time here, Grant, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate the time, and I'm pretty sure Habs fans are going to appreciate your thoughts. Um, so with that said, from recruits, thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.